We live in a time where a smart TV is capable of playing games like Fortnite, FIFA, League of Legends, New World, Destiny, and so much more without any additional hardware. I bring this up because I recently purchased an LG C1, as it's a TV that I've always dreamed of having for my gaming needs, and I absolutely love the way that the next gen consoles and my PC look on it. But one thing I simply didn't expect is to see the TV itself be a very capable gaming machine on its own. Now if you're wondering how this is possible, that's because recently both GeForce Now and Google Stadia have released their apps on LG's webOS. That means I have instant access to over 200 games available on Stadia and over 1100 games available on GFN. And within that entire catalog, you have some of the biggest and most recognizable names available. Not only that, but you get a ton of new releases that are well recognized on top of a growing library each and every week. You have your AAAs, your free to plays, and your indies. And it really got me thinking. There's a very real potential future where this TV might get an Xbox Cloud Gaming app and a PlayStation Now app if any of those Spartacus rumors are anything to go by. And imagine that, a future where you can play the likes of The Last of Us 2, Halo Infinite, Destiny 2, or even League of Legends all off one device. Ask me about this happening 10 years ago and I would have told you there's no shot that this would ever come true. And yet here we are, and cloud gaming is at the forefront of making that crazy idea a reality. I don't know about you, but in my friend group as a kid growing up in school, we would always talk about hypotheticals like PlayStation and Xbox grouping up to make the ultimate console. And while that more than likely is never going to happen due to business related reasons, this is pretty dang close, and I have to say it also cures that problem of having that friend who can't get the new console for a variety of reasons. But in a future where most TVs are smart TV enabled and have access to apps, that is really going to change things up. Better still is the fact that I can use any controller I want to play on these services as long as they connect to Bluetooth. Now look, to keep it completely real with you, I'm not saying that this is going to be the go-to solution for absolutely everyone in the near future. But I certainly do think that it's going to become more and more of a common thing as more and more smart TVs are trying to compete with each other and gaming is becoming bigger and bigger in the industry. And yes, of course, your hardcore gamer in the here and now probably still wants to be attaching their local hardware to that TV, but for your average consumer, and as a kid growing up, I would have been completely ecstatic knowing my TV could play all these games. For a parent, that represents money saved in the bank, and for a kid, well, that's simply games to play. But that's enough about the idea and concept of it, I think I've really driven home what my opinion is on the subject, now let me talk about how it performs. And well, it performs exactly like you'd expect it to based on your current setup. If you can run GeForce Now or Stadia on your desktop PC, Shield TV, or Chromecast, then it'll run on here too. Though it is worth pointing out that the GeForce Now app is currently in beta and still is only limited to a 1080p stream, so it can do the 4K HDR support like the Shield TV Pro can. And when it comes to the Stadia app, it's worth pointing out that it does feel snappier than it does on a Chromecast Ultra, which kind of surprised me. And for those wondering, yes, the Stadia app does output in 4K HDR. I really do hope to see that GeForce Now eventually gets 4K HDR support as well, because honestly speaking, I think it'll say something when Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy runs better on GeForce Now than it does on my PS5. But aside from that, the experience was solid, logging into each platform was easy, and I didn't really experience any sort of hiccups or glitches. You can simply connect your controller via Bluetooth, or in the case of the Stadia controller, directly to your Wi-Fi, and you're good to go. And just like that, you're your TV is now a full-on gaming machine. Now, I will state that for those interested, I would highly suggest connecting your TV to Ethernet. I always advise for a direct connection to your internet because it really does make the experience that much better and you'll have a lot less hiccups and glitches along the way. But if for some reason you can't and you need to go wireless, then be sure to try and connect to your 5GHz band if possible. Now if you have any remaining questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them the best I can, but before I sign off, I do want to ask you a question. What do you think about cloud gaming on smart TVs being built in. Do you think it's a big deal? Do you think it'll lead to a lot more adoption for cloud gaming in general? Let me know your honest thoughts down in the comment section below. Now if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out. And if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. As always, thank you for watching the video. This has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming and VR related. And until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.